Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Crank 2, High Voltage, starring Jason Statham, Amy Smart, Efren Ramirez, Clifton Collins Jr., Bay Ling, Dwight Yoakam, and David Carradine, and directed by Neville Dean Taylor. Now, I did see this in theaters and once and once in a hotel room, and maybe a few times on home viewing, but did I like it that much? Uh, let's get into it and we'll find out. We pick up right where Crank ended with Chev Chilios, returned by Jason Statham, blinking after the very long fall and is picked up by a Chinese mobster who switches his regular heart to a supercharged battery heart as one mobster with metal on him puts ashes of his cigarette and spits in Chev's regular heart as the operation is going. And as this, they prepare to cut his dick off, he gets back up and kills two doctors and runs out of the Chinese mob hospital. And he sees a battery charge station in, on his heart. And I'm enjoying this just not as quite as much as last time. Where it felt very energetic and a hell of a lot of fun, I'll say. Chev shoots some mobsters and puts a gun in with oil in a mobster's ass. Until he gives Chev the name Johnny Vang. And gets in a car as his battery is low, and he charges himself and starts driving a car and calls Doc Miles, returned by Dwight Yoakam, as this is a returning actor from the first film, to tell him that his battery is charged, and when the battery is charged, he has one hour to live, and he tries to get directions to the club, and he's going to kill Johnny Vang until he crashes the car and charges himself again to get the, to the club, and... He gets there as it's a house and beats people up and Johnny Vang escapes and Chev gets help to find Johnny Vang by Rhea, played by Bay Ling, as she wants to have sexual intercourse with Chev and she leads him to Johnny Vang who's getting tortured and Johnny Vang's laugh is so fucking annoying and Chev finds Eve returned by Amy Smart in the club where he's trying to find Johnny Vang and gets her off the stage while Rhea goes crazy on Eve, and Eve beats her up by a glass bottle. And this is unbelievable material that doesn't happen in real life, that to me was a real fucking problem I'm having with this whole movie. It's crude, which is something I'm not into as much, as this is not a fucking comedy, and as it's turning into one, and it's very problematic for me. Chev almost gets arrested, but Eve... And some other stripper gets arrested, but Chev gets supercharged by a taser and tases, takes Eve and the other stripper as the other stripper tells Chev where Johnny Vang is, which is a horse track. And they bump into a mob of people who want rights to carry their own weapons, which sounds familiar, but I'm not going to talk about it. And he runs into a couple of jackasses zapping a dog and Chev wants them to zap himself. And the cops go after him until Venus, who's played by Efren Ramirez, who's Kalo's brother, and takes him to the horse track in Hollywood Park as he is dra draining battery. He calls Doc Miles and suggests friction, which is touching skins on another person. And he rubs himself on an elderly woman as Eve finds him and they go on a the track. And they hump each other on the racetrack. And again, I'm going back to one of my problems with this movie. And and that is, it's not a fucking comedy. As Johnny Vang watches, so does the entire fucking world for that matter. And Chef sees Johnny Vang going after him. And Chef goes after Johnny Vang, I'll say. And Venus tries to stop him. But he's fucking useless because he shakes a lot. Because of a disease he has. And they get in a limo. And Don Kim as is introduced. As they throw out Venus for acting too weird, might I add. And they talk about a guy named Poon Dong. Played by David Carradine. As Don Kim is helping Chev out. But instead, he gets out and shoots every motherfucker in the limousine. And crashes and upcharges himself with high voltage electricity. And more... And the more I watch this, the less I like it, honestly. Eve is humiliated by Chev fucking her twice in front of millions of people. And her boss at the stripper club, Randy, gets beaten up by Eve or herself. And I thought, 
damn, this girl is motherfucking strong. And she gets arrested as he's done as she's done throwing his ass around. Meanwhile, Venus calls Orlando to help him out with Chev as he goes in the back of an ambulance to get himself charged electrically. And he gets out of the ambulance and sees Johnny Vang until Ray is stupid enough to cause a scene and Chev goes after Johnny Vang as he tries to shoot him, but instead the hospital workers, instead the hospital worker Chev threatened last time, has gotten shot dead. And Chev gets Johnny Vang at a power plant as he gets charged up and we get a giant monster movie fight as Chev beats up Johnny Vang as he almost kills him but gives him the key to the lock and Chev doesn't see his heart in his, as it's not in the box. He carries around him but Poon Dang as his heart and Doc Miles' assistant goes to the limousine, and we get flashbacks to Chev Chelios as a kid on live television, and I'm angry at this point. There's some unnecessary moments in the film like that and going through that King Kong versus Godzilla fight that looks like from between Chev and Johnny Vang, and going to Venus with Kalo and a few other uh, scenes, Rio, or no, Rhea and Venus have meltdowns together and recognize each other in the street as Orlando arrives and takes Ray with him. And Eve is in custody and gives the cop a bitchy attitude as she made bail. And I don't really get this police force. I will admit that right now, too. Chev gets captured and taken to Hell El Huron played by Clifton Collins Jr., who's somehow with Ricky, Ver Ricky Verona, who was the villain of the last film. And did we really need this? I mean, it's three months later, sure, and we get Ricky Verona in some breathing clear box that I swear to God looks like pee. And Venus comes in with Ray, as well as Orlando, and his African-American club, and they have a shootout, which isn't the same as last time. It felt energetic as here. I'm getting very angry at this point because this is about 5-10 minutes too long. And Chev kicks Ricky Verona's head into the pool water. And Chev all, is almost dead until he sees an electrical wire. And that's high voltage. And he's on fire and beats up El Haran with some rock music and Chev sees Eve in the imagination as he's hugging Ray and the movie ends with Chev still burning as he's on fire and giving everybody watching this movie the finger and I was already pissed off enough to watch this fucking movie and during the credits we get Doc Miles putting a uh, heat in Chev and as Doc Miles and Eve leave the room as it turns out he's alive and I'm glad there's no, not another part in this series, just because it's just, ugh. This movie made me angry and gave me the finger. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 3.8 out of 10. At the beginning, I'm thinking that, that is, this is fine, but not as good as last time, as it was a guilty pleasure last time, whereas here, I got plenty, I got pretty angry with this film, as there was quite a few unnecessary scenes, as this was 5 to 10 minutes too long. And this thing is not a fucking comedy. With its crude humor. As I had a really fucking hard time with that. I hope there's not another part uh, another part to the story. That's how pissed off I was by the end of the day. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for Crank. And I have one more movie. That's from Neville Dean and Taylor. That I'm going to review next week. That I haven't reviewed yet. I already did Ghost Rider. The second one I'll say. I'm going to review their gamer. So I hope to see you guys there. And until next time, let's pump up the heart, Chev.